So I want to talk a little bit about yield curves, always a, a fun topic. Um, but we just had um, recently another 75 basis point hike with the Fed. Uh, we've been seeing the 10-year the trade above four, but we've also seen the uh, short end of the curve um, moving to mostly inverted, in some cases flat, kind of depends on what curve you look at. I know a lot of people tend to look at the two-year and the 10-year. Um, you also spend a lot of time looking at the 10-year and the three-month, but I um, want to kind of talk a little bit about yield curves, where they're at right now, and also why a lot of folks look at them as recession indicators and where we're at with that right now. Oh, okay. Well, that's a that's a big old topic. Um, yeah, maybe we could just so, start with um, so, you why, know what, let's, what an no, inverted no, yield curve is. Uh, okay, inverted yield curve. Listen, it's nothing more. It's called the term spread is really what the right term is. It has been popularized as the yield curve, but it is a term spread. Term spread just refers to the difference between a short-term rate and a long-term rate, uh, or between any two rates, really, you know, short and long. Uh, typically, uh, people concentrate on the 10-year, two-year spread. Uh, why that's become popular, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the original research, which was done at Duke University in the late 80s, and I forget the guy's name. It really kind of bugs me. I need to go and look his name up. Uh, he did it as I believe was his uh, PhD thesis. He recognized or noticed that you got recessions after yield curve inversions. Uh, nobody really paid any attention to that prior to that. And, or if they did, they weren't telling anybody about it, put it that way. Uh, I've been in this business for 30 years and, uh, you know, 1991 on. And I, I know that the first 10 years of my career, I never even knew what a yield curve was because I was on the equity side. I was an option trader. So I wasn't, I didn't care about the yield curve. It didn't mean anything to me. But the point is that that research was done on the 10-year, three-month curve. Uh, it is true that the 10-year, two-year curve tends to invert prior to recession, but there have been false signals too. I don't, on the other hand, I don't know of a time when the 10-year, three-month curve has inverted and we avoided recession. I don't think that's ever happened. However, uh, I think you got to be careful here because, you know, an inversion that lasts a day or two and goes for, you know, five basis points or something, I'm not sure what the significance of that is. And I would say, too, that after the hike yesterday, today we're seeing a, a flattening of the curve uh, of that 10-year, three-month spread. Uh, the last I checked just a few minutes ago, it was flat, uh, 413 on both of them. So I, does that mean something? Well, the first thing to think about is, okay, let's talk about correlation and causation. We know that these things are correlated. Ten-year, three-month curve inverts, you get a recession. Well, first of all, when? Well, the last four recessions, the average lead time from the inversion to the onset of recession was 14 months. However, that includes one nine-month and one 21-month. So it can be a very long time uh, or it can be fairly short. But nine months, think about that. If it inverted here in November, you're talking about what? November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. You're talking about a recession in July potentially that's nine months if it's 14 months then you know we're talking you know early 2024 is that something we should be incorporating into our portfolio today maybe not however again this stuff is none of this stuff, and you know i think this gets to the the real meat of the issue when people talk about these yield curves a lot of people now have come to the conclusion that if the yield curve inverts i have to do certain things to my portfolio and i have to do them today but that's not what this means. Yield curve inversion is a warning. It says, hey, the Fed's, in a sense, what it says is the Fed's hike rates too much. Now, by the way, Jerome Powell does not watch the 10-year, two-year curve. He doesn't watch the 10-year, three-month curve. What Jerome Powell watches, <laughs> which I don't know why he latched onto this, but he apparently watches the three-month rate versus the, the three-month rate 18 months in the future. And he says that when that inverts, that's the surefire uh, signal of recession. Well, <laughs> yesterday it was about two basis points different, so it's just about inverted too. I'm not sure where it is today. I haven't checked. But I would say too, there's an easy way to check that in the market because you can just look at the euro dollar futures. And euro dollar futures, yeah, it inverts a lot sooner than 18 months. So, uh, you know, the euro dollar future curve says that it's closer than that. But I, you know, again, you can't equate these things. Um, I guess, you know, what, what does a yield curve mean? Go back to the correlation and causation. We know it's correlated. Well, is, does the inverted yield curve cause a recession? Okay, the traditional explanation I've always heard 
is well, you know, banks borrow short and lend long. They borrow at the short term rate, they lend at the long term rate. And so if those rates are equal, then they can't make any money. Yeah, there's a problem with that. Banks don't borrow at the three month bill rate. They don't borrow at the two year treasury rate. Uh, have you checked your money market fund lately? We just got an update today from Fidelity. Our money market jumped all the way up to one and a half. Uh, you know, look at your savings account, checking account. I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere close to even the, the 90 day bill rate. So that's number one is that those rates don't equate to what the bank really deals with. The second thing is there is no statistical evidence whatsoever that an inverted yield curve affects lending and even a little bit. In fact, I can go show you plenty of times where the yield curve is inverted and lending has continued to go up. So that's not it. Um, I, I don't think that there's really a connection, a solid connection between the yield curve inversion and the recession. It is just something that is a coincidence in some ways. Well, let me let me throw you out my, my view on it. You know, okay. My view is at the Fed, you, 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 you've got a few human beings, mostly academics, not maybe the best track record in the world. Um, and, and what they do has a, has a pretty big impact on the short end of the curve, what they're doing the Fed funds rate. And then on the other side, you have this thing called the market. And it's made up of a lot more people. It's got a lot of intelligent people in there. And it's pretty ruthless at uh, discounting information. When, in my mind, when you have an inverted yield curve, one of the things you have is you have in a disagreement between some eggheads at the Fed with not the best track record and the market. And the more the market's telling you is rates are going to be lower than the eggheads think they are. And in fact, rates are going to um, be so much lower that the long end of the curve has gone down and is predicting that they're coming up too much too fast, which is deleterious to the economy. What do you think about that theory? Well, I think there's some truth to that, wisdom of crowds and all those things, but markets are not always right either. Let's be honest. Uh, if you look back a year ago, uh, the market was not anticipating where we are today with inflation. Uh, it just didn't exist. But I do think that I'd much more want to listen to the crowd than I would the Fed. Uh, in fact, there's some research out that I just read today, and I haven't read the whole thing. I just skimmed it. But essentially, the DSGE models, uh, which the Fed uses, the New York Fed in particular, uh, have no statistical significance whatsoever. <laughs> they, they did this research. And I, don't know, I can't believe anybody's never done this before. The researchers said, well, you know, uh, they were feeding in wages and, and prices into these, into these models. And they said, well, you know, what happens if we just reverse those things? And we'll, we'll uh, you know, we feed him because the model was supposed to feed him wages. You get prices out. And they said, what if we feed him prices and see what comes out the other end? Yeah, it, it didn't change the model at all. It didn't have any effect because the model's wrong. It's just a model. It's a closed economy model, first of all. We don't live in a closed economy. There's lots of things, reasons why it's wrong. So yeah, you're right about the eggheads at the Fed. They don't know what they're doing. Um, I would say that if short rates and long rates are going up, uh, both going up, then that's a situation where, but, but long rates are going up slower then that's a situation that doesn't necessarily mean that the Fed is wrong. Uh, it means they're starting to be wrong. <laughs> they're not completely wrong yet. Now, if you get to the point where short rates are up, but long rates start to fall, and I've, I've said this many times, people say, well, how will you know when? I'll know when, when the Fed hikes and the long end rallies. When the Fed hikes rates and the long end, 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, that goes down, they've gone too far. We're not quite there yet. You know, uh, I would also we say to be knocking on the door, though. <laughs> well, we're trying. But listen, you know, that's the other thing, too. Look, what is the traditional signal for recession? People think it's the yield curve inversion, right? Right. But it's actually not. It's not. That's not the signal. The signal is right before recession. We're talking a, a few months at the most. The yield curve is going to start to steepen. Why? Because the market doesn't care what the Fed's doing at some point, And the short term rates are going to fall. Because the short end of the curve is going to start to anticipate that the Fed's going to have to cut rates. That the short end of the curve then is telling you the Fed's gone too far. They're going to have to cut rates. So when that happens, when you start to see that yield curve steepen very rapid, and it usually happens pretty rapidly, yeah. because something happens, you know, the economic data starts to really deteriorate quickly, and you'll see short-term rates just collapse and go straight down. It takes longer for long-term rates to come down, and you get that steepening effect. 
And that's why when you're at the depth of the recession, when you're at the worst part of the recession, the yield curve is very steep. So that's how you get there. Well, we're not there, obviously. Uh, but, you know, are we getting close? Well, I, you know, we'll see. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. I keep saying, look, the trend on rates and the dollar is still up. That's where we are. As long as those two things exist, those two big trends exist, then you got to go with them. You got to understand. They'll change whenever they change, and then you can change your portfolio. But as long as that's the condition we're in, you need to stick with what you got. You need to stay short to intermediate on your bond allocations. Uh, you know, your 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 uh, gold and, and and commodity allocations probably are not going to do great, and they haven't the last few months. Um, and your stock allocation is going to be you know fairly weak. This is the way it is. So you know, we know what what quadrant we're in, so to speak. Um, when that changes, then we'll change the portfolio. But I think people want to make these changes too quickly. They want to try to anticipate. And I think that's a bad thing to try to do here. The market will tell you what to do when you need to do it. Yeah, so can I sum up here? The 10-year, two-year, which has been inverted, not a perfect track record, and definitely a lot of times indicative of a recession at some point. Um, the 10-year, three-month, um, you can really kind of have a debate. It, it, is it really kind of flat? Has it inverted? But we're, we're right on the edge if it hasn't, which has a, a, a very excellent track record. But um, the sign of more of an imminent recession is that steepening. Yeah. And, and we still seem a little bit of a ways out from that from that steepening when it when it comes to the curve. So, um, you know, good conversation. Sounds like we're going to have to revisit this conversation um, as this keeps moving along. Uh, it's it's going to be really interesting to see how this develops. Uh, if they slow down sufficiently, you may see the curve steepen again because rate, long rates go up faster than short rates. That's not a bad thing. Could be interesting.